Hey guys, Archie Luxury on the Paul Pluter channel. Today guys, I am doing paid review, paid review 23QB28. Quick wristwatch check, I'm wearing a two-tone blue Z, two-tone blue Z. Now we've got a pretty big collection review, so we're going to go through this and we're going to give an opinion. Um, here we go. Hi all. I wanted to take stock and share my collection to date. Incredibly happy with everything I have so far and never thought I'd feed this addiction beyond my first spe Speedmaster I bought. Since I'm somewhere, someone with a six and a half inch wrist, I tend to gravitate towards things that are 40 mils or less. Some thoughts on the watch collection journey. Relax, it's just small clocks at the end of the day. Get the watch you want. How it looks in pictures can be very different to how it feels. I used to be jealous of my dad's watch collection and wanted him to share it or else lose it to one of his many ex-wives. But my mum reminded me that I should build my own since it would be more meaningful. Here we go. Uh, he goes, there's a me metaphor in there. Collection, okay, here we go. Rolex 116200. Silver dial with roulette date and jubilee bracelet. This one was from an estate sale. Honestly, super classic with enough ornaments with the red roulette date to make it special. Easy staple of the collection. Next one, a Rolex 124270 Explorer 1. I used to hate the mixture of Arabic and sticked indices, but it's become my most worn watch over time. I used to have the 114270, that's the 36 mil, and the 124270 uh, is just that extra, uh, just is just that extra lift to turn a really good watch into one of the greats. It's slightly bigger, it's gone from, that's the 39 mil. He's got a Rolex 126720BRO GMT Master 2. Uh, this was my meant to celebrate a new chapter of my life, including moving countries. So can't think of a better way. Can't think of anything better than a Pepsi. I think it's a 126710. But anyhow, that doesn't matter. Despite Batman being my favourite comic book character, definitely, definitely one of the bolder watches. He's got a Rolex 126610 Submariner with date, the Sermit, recommended from a friend and I haven't looked back. I always wanted to own a sub and was just in the right place and right time in my life where it was offered at a really great price. Since then, super easy to wear and masterfully proportioned. He's got a Rolex 116500 Daytona chronograph. The Panda version gets all the hype, but I think there's something so elegant about the all-black Daytona. Yes, the screw-down crowns, uh, crown guards are a bit of a pain, but the dressier case and bold indices set it apart from other chronographs. He's got an Omega Speedmaster Professional 3861. The Speedmaster Professional was the first luxury watch that I ever bought for myself and was sad to let it go when the old 1861 just didn't sit right on my wrist. The 3861 is a quiet revolution that was made, has made the watch infinitely more wearable, especially with the new bracelet. The best Speedmaster Pro out there in my opinion. He's got an Omega Speedmaster 60th anniversary. I always thought that the classic Speedmaster designs were so much more appealing than the Daytonas. Yes, the Pro gets all the attention, but there's something really cool about the broad, arrow, and more compact case. I think this was the first watch I got from uh, Watch Exchange, so thanks. Oh, Reddit Watch Exchange, so thanks, Reddit. He's got an Omega Seamaster 300 Blue Ceramic, the second luxury watch, watch I've gotten and has definitely seen a good deal of world on my travels. Like many 90s babies, Piers Brosman as 007 was all the advertisement I needed to get this one and I really wish Omega would go back smaller with the Speedmaster's 
with the Seamasters with modern updates. Then he's got an A Lange and Sun, thin with small seconds. I think the only pure uh, dress watch I have, my partner wears it more, as she has a special connection to it growing up in Germany. Germany. I used to struggle between this and the Calatrava, but thought A Lange and Sun was a little more niche and special, and the design ultimately just spoke to me more. Um, okay. And he's got a Grand Seiko 5722. This one was a gift uh, through, for your information, in Asian tradition, you shouldn't give people watches since it puts a time limit on the relationship. The old SBGR 095 was stolen and a year later got a legit vintage model as a birthday present, so it's extra special to me. And a reminder of growing up in Japan, where my dad and grandfather would take me to watch to the watch shop and talk about how accurate Seiko's are. He's also got a Casio F91W, my first running watch. What can I say, a classic. Potential next models, a Cartier Tank Solo B, another classic, but different in that it's square and uses new technology to keep time, pretty radical. A Rolex Submariner 124, Four o six o. There's something so appealing about the classic sub that I feel even the similar looking uh, BLRO and even Sermit don't have. Back to basics, a little redundant but still desirable. And the latest iteration is the best Submariner to date from my perspective. And a Patek Philippe Calatrava, oh Patek Philippe Perpetual Calendar. Too expensive, overhyped name, but to me the most appealing watch from Patek and one of, if not the best. Watch with moon phase designs, also at 36 mil. I think this really makes a compelling dress watch. And then an AP Royal Oak 15450 ST. Yes, walking cliche, but another classic. Any and all feed, any feedback welcome. So there we go. That's his collection. So what do I think there? Well, you know what? I think you have some amazing bases covered. The... 11620, that's the date just. Classic steel date just, can't go wrong. The Explorer 1, superb. The You've got the Pepsi. Um, the Pepsi, absolute classic, iconic. You've got the Sermit. And you've got a black Daytona. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five Rolex collection there, which is pretty impressive. Then we got some Amigas. We've got a, a Seamaster 3861. We've got a Seamaster 60th Anniversary. A, sorry, Speedmaster 60th Anniversary. Uh, Speedmaster 3861. And we've got a Seamaster 300 Blue Ceramic. Three really nice Omegas. Uh, we've got a Lange. And we've got a Grand Seiko. The Casio, come on. We can't include that. That's not a luxury watch. So, I think five Rolex, three Omega, and a Lange, and a Grand Seiko. What a beautiful collection you have indeed. This is nice. Five Rolex impresses me. Three Omega is very good. A Lange and a Grand Seiko. Man, you've, got, you've just hit it out of the park. The Cartier Tank Solar Beat. Forget it. No, I wouldn't get that. I wouldn't get it. Don't waste. <coughs> you don't need it. The Submariner, no date. I don't think you really need that. I would say no, because you've already got the Sermit. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I would say you don't need the no date. Perpetual Paddock, you know what? That is a great choice, but I'd also say the 5205 annual calendar could hit, scratch that itch in a more modern way. So I would definitely consider the 5205. When you say 36 mil, a lot of the a, a, a lot of the perpetual calendars, it's mainly the 3940, which is the 36 mil. A lot of them are bigger than that. So uh, I think you... Uh, I'd... I'd you know, I'd be honest with you, I think the 5205 or the 5, 
396 that those are both annual calendars would be the better way to go and then finally we've got the the royal oak which is the 37 mil the 14 sorry the 15450 love it it's a great watch that could be absolutely perfect it's expensive it's going to be very expensive to service but it is a great watch and i think it would fit in well with the collection so personally Yes, I'd add a paddock calendar, and yes, I'd add the Royal Oak. But as for the Cartier, I don't think you need it, and I don't think you need another sub. You've got, you've got the Sermit. I'd just stick with that. That's my honest opinion there. I think your collection's got a lot of strength. It's beautiful. You've got so many bases covered. I think you should be so happy with it. This is a beautiful collection with some really important bases covered. Looking at Rolex, you've got Office Wear with the Datejust and the Explorer. You've got a GMT with the Pepsi. You've got a Sermit, which is your diver, and you've also got a Daytona. So you've got Chronograph, GMT, and Diver. Your bases covered, and then you've got the Work Watch in the Datejust. So, I, I think you've got so many bases covered. Congratulations. It's a beautiful collection. You've done well. Enjoy your watches. I really, really say that. Enjoy your watches. I can't think, I can't see how you really need to add too much. This is a beautiful collection. So, well done. Guys, like, subscribe, and tell your friends. Remember, I can't survive on Google Ads. I need... Paid reviews to keep me on YouTube. Look down below, get a paid review, and I will see you in the next one. See you later. Hi, guys. It's Archie Luxury. Guys, I want to talk to you about David SW. David SW, David SW. Guys, if you are in America, if you are looking for a Rolex watch of your dreams, in fact, if you're looking for a contemporary modern wristwatch, I strongly advise you to look at David SW. Guys, don't play the dealer games. Don't bring in chocolates or crispy creams for your dealer hoping to get a Rolex at retail. It's futile. Please, guys, save your dignity. Keep some pride. Go to David SW. I would highly recommend David SW, David SW. If you're in America and you're looking for a watch, go to David SW, David SW, David SW. Hey guys, Archie Luxury on the YouTube sensation, the Paul Pluto channel. Guys, I need you to help me out, guys. I can't survive on Google Ads alone. I need you to request a paid review. 50 US dollars, look down in the description. 50 US dollars, I will review your collection. I'll tell you what I think of it and I'll give you some pointers. The other thing is guys, you can sponsor me on Patreon. Patreon allows you to pay a couple bucks a month, a dollar, two dollars, five dollars, whatever you want. And it keeps me going on YouTube because guys, I'm in a niche. Nobody can make money out of the views I get. The views are crap because it's a small specialized area and I don't talk about garbage for the sake of views. Guys, sponsor me on Patreon, look down below, and I will see you in the next one.